welcome to a Majority X debate between Michael Brooks and Sargon. You're not, wait, Sargon of Akkad. Because, forgive me, I actually confused you with Sargon of Iberius. But this is Sargon of Akkad. Uh, and we are going to be debating the progressive left meme, terrorism, Islam, the Middle East, and uh, figuring it all out together. I know people are watching on the live stream. We'll obviously post this again uh, later after it's all over. And uh, before I go further, I want to welcome uh, Mr. Sargon himself. Sargon, how are you? Hi there. Very well. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, glad, uh, glad to get have an opportunity to have this uh, this confrontation with you, this friendly mm -hmm. confrontation. Um, so, <clears throat> I guess we'll we'll sort of start this uh, conversation off. This is how it went because I I do a segment uh, for Majority X, which is the Majority Reports YouTube channel called Debunked, where I take ideas like Barack Obama's a secret Black Panther. Uh, or uh, something equally as ludicrous as that, and I'll mm -hmm. do a debunk. Um, and I went after this meme that I see a lot on social media uh, of this quote-unquote regressive left. Um, and you had a response uh, to that, uh, to my video, uh, where you attempted to take it down. But let me first frame uh, the argument so everyone remembers what I basically am arguing in that video and beyond. There's sort of three core areas here to this debate. Number one is that a lot of people who, and, and, and look, first, before we go any further, I want to concede right out of the gate that if we're doing sort of hunting on social media for people writing stupid things, we can find examples of anything. So I'm sure that there are some people who have justified you know, even terrorism in some instances. There's people who've justified human rights abuses because of a kind of a delusional cultural relativism. Right. Uh, I did a, so we, yeah, we so, from the gate so we there is so, such a thing as the regressive left. Uh, well, not you in just, the way... You just said it existed. Hold, hold, and hold, that's, hold, 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 the conclusion of your video was <laughs> the, reg the regressive left doesn't exist. So I'm going to explain that. So, know, it res so it exists as, in the same way Bernie bros exist, in the sense that, yes, you can find maybe one or two examples of people writing dumb things, but as a large, organized, politically effective force, no, it does not. And I'm going to explain the three... Okay. Wait, hold up, hold up. I'm going to explain the three variables, and then you can go ahead. Okay, go. Okay. So number one, it doesn't exist for... Th that the sort of prime people driving it are people who seem to be like yourself, unfortunately, that are people who want to claim the term liberal but also engage in lazy ahistorical generalizations about Islam. So that's why this term floats around a lot. Number two, it seems to appeal to people who do not want to do the actual homework and take on the intellectual challenge of, as an example, studying history, studying policy, understanding why we are where we are with an issue like Islamic uh, terrorism or Islamic extremism. These are people who don't want to engage in a conversation on, as an example, who funded Wahhabism and the role of Saudi foreign policy in developing that and the role of Western policy in s developing Saudi foreign policy. These are much more complicated discussions than just internet memes. And people who use the term regressive left almost always want to avoid them. And number three, the reason it's a problem to talk in a reductionist and dumb way about Islam is not because it's PC or it hurts people's feelings or all this other mishigas, that's Hebrew, uh, excuse me, Yiddish, by the way. The reason is, is because we need to be very smart and very precise and very strategic in understanding these issues, precisely because terrorism is an important issue, as is multiculturalism, as is the quest for human rights and reform within not just Islamic countries, but in fact, globally. So when we make dumb, generic overgeneralizations about Islam, we undermine the work of people like Fatima Mernisi, as an example. I don't know if you're familiar with her. She was a prominent Moroccan Islamic feminist. Asma Jahangir, who's a Pakistani human rights attorney who's worked in Pakistan for several uh, decades. Uh, Khatami, uh, Ahmed Musali, who are both Islam and democracy theorists, 
working on theories of reconciling Islam with democracy. Now, these projects may or may not be successful, but if you're saying that you are compassionate and concerned about the human rights dimensions of what is happening inside Islamic societies, and then you turn around and you say that Islam is one monolithic thing or the mother load of bad ideas, which you co-signed on in your video attempting oh, to take me down, did. then, okay, so you did. absolutely cool. did. Okay, so great. When you co-sign on that, and then you say you want to support reformists within the Muslim world, you're engaging in a performative contradiction, and again, avoiding doing the actual legwork of the real historical, real policy investigation that is required to forward what you claim you want. So the conclusion is, is that it's a thing that exists in tiny pockets. It's vastly inflated in terms of its importance. People who inflated in, in terms of its importance don't want to do policy or history or geography or economics. And as a result of not wanting to do policy, history, geography, or economics, it leads to dumb ideas, bad policy, simplistic and delusional understandings about very important things. Look, I don't play video games, uh, so I don't make YouTube videos about them. It's important to have a grasp in the ground of what you're talking about. Oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah, go um, ahead. Well, I'm, I'm convinced I'm talking to someone from the regressive left now, if that's any help to you. Uh, in identifying that's exactly profound what's going help. On here. It's a pro well, I, you, you do seem to be profound. under a few misapprehensions. You, but okay, so, okay, but go oh, into on, actual on, detail. No, 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 you've just had like a five minute monologue. So go into actual detail, though. Don't do silly ad hominem. Oh, go I will, into actual I will detail. go into detail. Right? Okay, go ahead. So, how big is big enough for you to regard someone as important? That's the first question that comes up, because you think that the regressive left is made up of unimportant plebeians on the internet making ahistorical generalizations. And not just the, the no. thing you have to understand as well is the regressive left is not limited to opinions on Islam. But that is one of the major issues that people are trying to talk about that the regressive left is getting in the way of. But how, how big would these people need to be? I mean, what, what makes kind of me a member of the regressive left? No, no, no. No, you just question. threw it out, no, answer, so I want to know why. Answer my question. No, no, they, no. Well, you answer mine first because you put a direct no, accusation my, at me. No, I asked my question You first. put a direct accusation at me. I don't care. I asked my question I care. How big I would, care. I don't care that you care. How well, big I don't care that you enough? don't care that I care. What makes That's me a great. part of the regressive left? Go ahead. Justify Literally it. Literally your opening monologue. Right, so and explain that. And you said you don't understand why. So let's actually go ahead. get into that, shall well, we? Yeah, tell now, me why I'm in the regressive left. Go you, for it. You have made the assertion yes. that the people in the regressive left, who you agree are the regressive left, mm -hmm. are not big enough to be important. Mm -hmm. How big is big enough to be important to you? What makes me part of the regressive left was the question. No. The question is how big do you think these people have to be? I mean, do they have to be in charge of... A major um, news outlet. Um, I think that you can, th this is a semantic game. I think if you want to say, okay, so as an example, you guys wheel out Glenn Greenwald as an example mm -hmm. of the quote unquote regressive left, of which I don't, which is exactly, look, and I actually don't agree with everything that Glenn says about foreign policy, but mainly, to. sorry? I wouldn't expect you to. But mainly, the reason seems to be and again, explain what makes him regressive left. If you don't want to explain what makes me regressive left, you're going to have to answer that question. It seems to me that the main objection to him, again, is that Glenn Greenwald engages in policy analysis and history analysis, which you guys always go to as, that's a justification, that's an avoidance of the issue, even though those, are, of course, are the main drivers. But what makes Glenn Greenwald of the regressive left and or what makes me of the regressive left? You still right, haven't explained okay. but it. We, we agree that Glenn Greenwald is, ag is agreed to be a part of the regressive left. Well, I, mean, I don't even agree to the, to the term. I still, you still okay. haven't explained to me why me or him I, are part I, I of it. I will. Go I ahead. will get to that. But we have to establish what we're talking about first. We have. Understand? So go for it. So, okay, so Glenn Greenwald, right? Ezra Klein, would you say that he's... Someone with a wide reach, with a loud voice on the internet? Uh, yes, sure. So would I. He's also a part of the regressive Okay, life. so great. I'm excited I, now. Explain well, what yeah, connects the three I'm of us to, other than being Jewish. Calm down. Slow down, right? We're not in any hurry, right? So, we, I mean, actually do have a, say, we do actually have a hard out. We, okay, we have other things to do. That, so go okay, ahead. That's fine. But you have to understand, we have to go through this. So the less you interrupt me, the easier this will be. And right? the easier it will be if but you answer New York, questions. The New York Times, okay. they would also be a, a major outlet. You'd agree? That and salon.com, never, never heard of, I've never heard of the New York Times. You've never heard of the New Bear York Times. Bear with me, I've okay. never heard of them. 
But what, what about Salon.com? Have you heard of them? Um, is that a bar? No, it's a newspaper. Well, a newspaper. I say, I say generously. It's a, it's a <laughs> regressive outlet. Okay. Um, okay. So the main issue is that you're trying to discuss events and people, and we need to discuss ideas. <laughs> okay. Do you understand the difference between those two things? Um, before I answer yet another one of your questions, and if, uh, you're going to explain what makes Ezra Klein, Glenn Greenwald, and myself regressive. Because insofar, all I can tell, the qualities that we share, is that we are interested in policy, history, and the apparatus of how things are actually done. Not yeah, in not, masturbation not in on the internet. Criticizing your analysis of these things. I, in fact, I'm, I'm going to just assume that I agree with what your analysis and is. And we're Jewish. Right. Is I that a factor? No. Why would you think that would be a factor? This is this because is I thought factor. it would trigger you. I'm just playing with you. Go why ahead. You? Go ahead. Relax. You, okay. It's all right. I'm just joking. You have to understand. I, I probably agree with you on your analysis of U.S. foreign policy. I am in no way a fan of U.S. foreign policy. However... I am also not a fan of the policy of the regressive left. It's interesting. That what is that policy? Racial issues. Go ahead. Go before ahead. anything else, because this What's is something. What's the policy? Well, bringing up racial issues. In fact, that's not a make, policy. That was a joke. This is exactly the policy of the regressive left, right? I've got. Um, <laughs> okay. Seriously, you, right? Okay, I'm looking at an article from Salon.com. Uh, white people are more racist than they realize. On, on what possible level do you think it's okay to generalize all white people, or anyone based on their skin color? I mean, that is literally what you're arguing against when it comes to Islam. And this is always a feature of the regressive left. Okay, so I'm going to engage in apparently this, this bar or pub you were referencing published a thing about racism. So I haven't read it. I'm not familiar with the article, but I will go based off of the headline. If you agree... And I just want it to be noted that it is very interesting that you have not engaged at all and are basically conceding the policy terrain, which is the whole point of my video and what you said was bullshit. But I'll go in, I'll go in, no, I'll go into the salon thing. I'll go into the salon thing. I'll go into the salon thing. I'm testing your policy analysis. I'll go into the salon thing. The whole point is the policy analysis, but I'll go into the salon thing. What I presume, what I presume is, well, do you want me to answer or go ahead? Sorry. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So what I presume is that the Salon article from this pub, which I have not read, and it's interesting that pubs are publishing articles, that probably what they had done is looked at some research on unconscious racial attitudes and biases. So as an example, you can take a study, and I actually participated in one in college to help somebody for their, their thesis, where you can um, rate when you see names on a screen you can rate public, uh, positive or negative reactions to them. Now, you're not told whether or not these are quote-unquote black names or white names or Asian names or whatever, but you can see certain names like, well, in, apropos of this conversation, say Mohammed. And if you rate it negatively, maybe that is a cue um, for biases that you might have that you're not consciously aware of. So I would assume that the article is just saying that a fair amount of white people hold some biases that they're not necessarily aware of, of which okay. that's okay, undisputably true that and not terribly, terrifyingly controversial. Great. Okay, let's take that point. So now if we have uh, data that's very similar that mm -hmm. shows us that, for example, the large number of Muslims hold a conscious mm -hmm. bias. In mm -hmm. fact, this is actually their opinion and attitude mm -hmm. on a certain subject. Mm -hmm. And that subject is remarkably illiberal. Mm -hmm. What should we do? Well, here's what we should do. First of all, what you need to do when you talk about Muslims, obviously, is, first of all, disaggregate that polling data. And any good polling data on quote-unquote white people is going to do that as well. So we right, know I'm, as... No, 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 let me so finish. You want, I'll it. finish. I'll finish. No, no but that, that's... I'll the finish. No, I'm answering your question. Just because you don't like the direction I'm going in doesn't mean I'm not going to answer it. That wasn't your first response about the thing about white people. You went on to justify it because it was about white people. As soon I as it justified about, it, I said that was probably what the article was. You have to put in a caveat at the beginning. That was probably what the article was. Well, I didn't say how I would write the article. I've never read the article. So I'm not going to get into these mental gymnastics with you. I this can only not, speak. No, because I'm going to speak to. No, because I'm, you still have not defined how I'm a regressive leftist. You haven't yeah. answered any of my questions. And you're not responding to anything I'm saying. I'm, you're talking I'm, about an article that I haven't even read. So but, I'll answer your question if you stop well, interrupting. Uh, if not, you can go ahead. Look, right. 
Do you want to answer or no? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. You answer. Okay. So what I would say is you need to, first of all, disaggregate between a religion that includes over a billion people. That's pretty obvious. Attitudes sure. are not the same. They vary widely. Absolutely. The second point is, is that primarily, if you look at this historically and not as some static ahistorical idea and you do the actual legwork and the homework that I know someone like you could do because obviously you're a smart guy and I'm not saying that in any way facetiously. I mean this sincerely. This is partially what frustrates me. You can do the homework and look at and say, okay, so why is it that in different times in history, as a, like in Spain as an example, Islam was much more forward than Christianity at that time. Why okay, was it? No, no, let me, I'm going to finish the point. History. I'm going to finish the point. Yeah. But let's why was it? Why history. was it? Why so was it? Why was it that the rise of modern yeah. Wahhabism, which is the core point of the problems you're identifying rightly, is a modern product of Saudi and Western foreign policy. As soon as you engage in that conversation, you're talking about policy, you're talking about history, and those where the real issues are. So if you think just quoting some polling data and telling people that their ideas are stupid is going to either help liberals in those societies or solve hard policy questions, it might make you feel better at night, and it might make you feel pleased with yourself, but it's delusional. It's not going to do anything. It's not going anywhere, and I've never advocated that attitude for white people or anybody else. Are you uncomfortable talking about these ideas? Because, like with um, nope. uh, Ben Affleck and Sam Harris on the Bill Maher show, as soon as Sam was trying to explain that, look, we know who these people are mm -hmm. that hold these ideas. We know exactly how many people hold these ideas. And we know exactly what they're doing. And we know exactly what their and ideas are. we need to are. know exactly so why, what they're why doing. Why can we not talk about these ideas? Um, how many people hold these ideas? Well, it depends which idea you're talking about. Well, but pick, take you your pick. To, take your pick. Okay, well, Sharia law, for example. I mean, okay. should, I, I presume you're not in favor of Sharia law, right? Well, I am not in favor of any type of religious uh, okay. law. But, the one but, but you still, but, but just, just a note here, we're still going off and the wheels are coming off. You have not defined in any serious way regressive left or explained what connects me, Ezra, and Glenn. Okay. Other than I, I that, we want to talk about policy. Have you still haven't done it. First. I'll I'm get to Sharia later, but I've already asked no, four you, of your questions yes, without I, you I, answering I, that one. It's the fact that you seem to have racial and ethnic hang-ups and sort of cultural hang-ups. I think you do. I'm not well, hearing any from me. I'm sure, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do think that, right? But okay, well, that's just so what you're fixated on. Let's talk law now, right? Okay, I've explained why I think you're part of the regressive left. Because I... No, you haven't. No, you haven't. You're asserting you have. The... One of the reasons what hang -ups? I told you the regressive... What hang-ups? Tell me what hang-ups. will not allow the conversations going further forward. Because I and won't let it go in your right direction, now. which is the point of my video. Well, you're doing that right now. <laughs> okay. No, you really are. Right. Define okay, it. Let's, define let's, let's, it. All I'm asking, let's, define what are my hang-ups. actually just do it. Just do it. You you're, seem to have a problem talking about people of different ethnicity. I will talk about any ethnicity you okay, want if you ever answer my qu any questions. In, in, in this specific case, let's talk about Sharia law. No, no after you answer the question, I'll talk to you for the rest of the conversation about Sharia. If you can answer the three questions that you've avoided the whole conversation. What this are my hang-ups? Define regressive left and what makes left. me Glenn and Ezra. Yeah, you can keep repeating it all you want, but you haven't answered the question. This is a liberal what debate. What you want doing now is indicative of your position on the regressive Not left. agreeing with you? you okay. No. Attempting di to diffuse and define like, your the terms. Issue. Then we'll talk about Sharia the rest of the time. <laughs> answer Honestly, the questions. Then we'll go. I have answered your question. No, you haven't. You've there said is no you have. answer good enough for you. All right, I've answered your questions on Sharia. I've answered your questions on Sharia. I have. Okay. Well, let, well, I haven't asked any questions about Sharia yet. Well, let's just say I have. Do you agree with it? And you kind of went blah, 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 about that. So do because you I've Sharia already answered four questions when you've answered <laughs> none. <laughs> for you to understand right do you agree with sharia law do you i'll think go into sharia if you answer those questions but look do for sake of moving things along because you're never going to answer but again i just want this notated that you still over 20 minutes in the debate yeah. have not defined your terms no. and you've not answered any questions no. now